So, PRC versus Korea. This is not really a debate here, so let me hit you with the teal deer straight out of the bat. Uh, all the Korean-made guitars in my statistically insignificant sample of like 30 uh, have really nice necks, and they took the extra step, polished the frets, no sharp ends, leveled the frets, no farting out, and... Um, 15 years ago, they were still really cheap, like uh, 300 bucks or under. Like, uh, I got this uh, Korean-made Epiphone Firebird copy, Impulse Buy at uh, Just Music in downtown Hamburg, 250 euro bucks. It is so sweet. The finish, uh, the that uh, yeah, the pickups kind of sucked. I replaced them, but I mean, that's to be expected anyway. Uh, you know, it's a no-frills Firebird replica thing. Hey, it's got the uh, crazy banjo tuners, though. Anyway, it, it is totally sweet. I couldn't believe it. Impulse buy. I didn't need it, but I just instantly... Oh, God, this is great. So it's one example of uh, how the sweet necks in Korea. Here's another one. This uh, Steinberger Spirit. I got it as a joke. Uh, I thought, oh, gimmick guitar, 300 bucks. Why not? Uh... Made in Korea, and it's turned into my main guitar for Sambergot. Uh, I love it. It is it is great in every detail. Nice neck. The um, Steinberger five string um, bass, which I also have yet to make a video on. Really nice neck. Pickups kind of suck, but whatever. Uh, Three hundred bucks. Awesome. Uh, and. Here's another one, the uh, 300 bucks Ibanez Ergodyne, uh, made in Korea, uh, indescribably sweet, so difficult to describe the sweetness of this that, uh, well, someday I'll make a video, it'll take a long time. Now, uh, this was inspired, I mean, everybody knows Korea is going to make better guitars than the PRC, but now they're way expensive. 15 years ago, they weren't. Uh, and this is all inspired by the greatest comment I have ever received on my modest channel that nobody any watches anyway. Uh, it was in response to the Firefly FF338 Pro Baritone, which is kind of uh, F uh, semi-hollow F whole thing. I got it as my American guitar because I figured, you know, Firefly, everybody's ranting and raving about how it's the best guitar for like under 300 bucks and you can't really get them in Europe. So I, I figured this is my chance. Got it at, oh, when I was in America as my Appalachian vacation guitar so I can get fucked in the ass because I got such a pretty mouth. Now, it looked really, really sweet. You can watch a video. It, slowly, I realized the bridge is in the wrong place or something because you can't get the intonation right, and there's some inherent walk wonkiness about it that it's impossible to fix. It was really weird. Putting the bridge in the wrong place is a little bit more egregious than having sharp fret ends or not doctoring your frets, right? Because that's going to cost more than the guitar to get re-drilled and move the bridge. No way. Uh, but it was amusing, and I can use it for slide, man, <laughs> whatever. So I started making some jokes about the PRC. I called it the kingdom of the Kamikov, and uh, I made some jokes about the bridge because I got a thing about bridges in the PRC because, uh, you know, building bridges to nowhere to pad the GDP, it's kind of like stuff they do here, you know, like paying some contractors to dig a hole and then paying other uh, contractors to fill it back in and then like both sides go to the pad the gross domestic product whatever so this guy apparently great documentaries everybody should subscribe my best comments are yet you can watch antiques road show reruns non-stop on great documentaries he wrote just think for twenty nine hundred dollars more you could have gotten a mass-produced American one. Oh, and I see you are from Kentucky, which is home of the lung cancer cough. On behalf of the over 300,000 Americans who die each year because of Kentucky tobacco, thank you for not being commies. As if any of you even understand what that term means. Now, 
Samozřejmě jsou druze, nevím nic o komunismu, já jsem byl by amik. Debilný levák, tak um, be that as it may. I guess he got triggered. Now, uh, I am not making jokes about China. I refuse to denigrate the good name, the glorious history of Zhongguo, uh, by referring to this modern day monstrosity of uh, as China. I mean, Mao destroyed China. 4,000 years of continuously pre uh, preserved language, music, culture, uh, earliest technologically advanced civilization of which we are currently aware, who had uh, running water and all kinds of great shit at times when our ancestors were living in the trees, right? So, no, no, no. Um, uh, West Taiwan or uh, Lower Tibet, uh, I will not uh, refer to that as China, so don't... Uh, China is a good thing, right? Uh, so, anyway. It got me to thinking, basically, uh, communism and not taking the last step. Making it look good, getting it out the door at uh, your factory, uh, but basically letting the suboptimal shit uh, leave your factory, which they, they do not do in Korea. I got, like I said, my really cheap Korean guitars are optimal, like... Worst thing you could say is like maybe you have to replace the pickups or some shit like that. Now, it's all started back in 2010. I another impulse buy. I got this uh, Korean-made Eastwood Sidejack, which became the centerpiece of Shy Squad, the Hetz Stuck, the heart of Shy Squad, and uh, it's really sweet. And it had good sounding pickups. The whole thing is great. I left it totally factory, except uh, buzz stop in to prevent the strings from popping out when I hammer it too hard. Now, uh, apparently Eastwood still had Korean production back in 2010. Got more Eastwoods, a couple years, I got this one, 2012, China, uh, and it's not terrible. But, you know, they didn't uh, do a nice job with the neck. Uh, uh, with The neck is totally different. The neck dimensions are different. The neck profile is different. Uh, this one has a sweet neck. This one doesn't. The pickups here are extraordinarily janky, but I'll give them a pass for the pickups. This whole rant I'm doing is not about the pickups or the sound. It's about having a nice neck and especially... Do Refusing to doctor the frets before it leaves the factory apparently is part of the communist code in Mao's little red book because they don't do that. Uh, they don't take the extra step. They don't give a fuck. And gi not giving a fuck is um, the centerpiece of the argument against communism because if you can sell it, if you can get it out of the door and they buy it, who gives a fuck? You know, as long as it looks good. Because, like, that's the whole thing. You know, you make... Now, now, now before I go any further, this uh, this one's not really shitty, but it's kind of, you know... Eastwood moved production to China. PRC. There was a detectable decline in quality. Price stayed the same, five fifty, six hundred bucks, and, and yet my Korean one, totally awesome. Same thing with this uh, side jack. Which I used for the late great Tommy Stumpf. The neck profile is totally different, which means they they didn't give a fuck about setting the CNCs right for the uh, exact same dimensions as this totally awesome neck. And the pickups sucked. I replaced them with humbuckers, but um, again, we're not ranting. The neck profile, not good. Frets, not good. Good enough for me to hammer on power cords. And then, hilariously, they put Eastwood of Canada to presumably... Mm, divert a ch attention away from the uh, kingdom of the Kamikov. This also costs like five fifty. Oh, I got it. This one, uh, yeah, it's green, so I got the St. Patrick's deal. Um, because you know, luck of the Irish, I, it was like 20% off, so I got it because it's green and Tommy Stump loves green. Th this is how I got in the band, by the way, because he loves green so much. He's like, This guitar is perfect, black, white, and green were his. Uh, signature colors uh, for the newly re revamped electro metal band that he started 
where I got to play chunky power chords in. Now, but this guitar is kind of janky, not too bad, but mm, at least it looks cool. And that's the whole point of communism. At least it looks cool. As long as you can sell them a pig in the poke and not realize, have them not realize that the neck, which is totally not photogenic, just like my fucking face, uh, and doesn't show up. And you, you can't tell from a photo that it needs a fret job and you're going to have to pay 150 more. Of course, this is common knowledge. Everybody uh, knows it, but um, you don't need me to explain this shit to you, but I'm just going through my statistical ir ir irrelevancies here because great documentaries made such a great comment. Um, another one, Eastwood, they really fucked themselves uh relocating their production to China and apparently not taking a look at this at home because the frets all suck. Uh, the Sin uh, baritone, uh, which is actually pretty good, the pickups sound all right and stuff, but it's like, they did not give a fuck about this neck. This is a baseball bat neck. Uh, it's actually not too bad, but it makes me think they didn't they didn't dial in the uh, dimensions of the neck on their on their automatic machines because you know you know production is totally automated it doesn't really matter who makes your guitars we know that this is not some kind of ethno question about but it is a question about letting the guitar leave the leave the factory when it's not in good fret work which is also just one last one last little step I think you need a real person to uh, take a file to it. I mean, um, a, a level um, thing and maybe file it a little. But uh, for one last little step, they could have had awesome guitars where you just have to replace the pickups. Instead, you have to take it to Lul Luthier for a fret job, which could cost over 100 bucks. Uh, in this case, they didn't set up the machine right. There is no way that Jeff Sin commanded them to make this baseball neck i mean correct me if i'm wrong you can't even tell how clubby this thing is but um other than that the guitar would have been completely awesome except shoddy uh this whole pickguard thing they didn't give a fuck um the pickguard and the uh accoutrements here are not are kind of janky you can tell but that's to be accepted still this was 600 bucks uh so uh, it's one of those guitars that don't play very much uh ever now before it sounds like I'm doing total bash and roast, I got lots of good PRC guitars. I mean, that were or that are definitely good enough for 300 bucks. Now this one is my best PRC guitar. It's an Eastwood Airline TB64 replica of the legendary Testco Del Rey blonde head, blonde redhead special. Um, yeah, made in. Um, what passes for Zhongo nowadays. The People's Republic of Kufurstan. Now, uh, this cost 900 bucks, and yes, they did put the extra, um, put in the extra mile to make a nice fret job and stuff, and it, it is really cool. So I'm not, and I got an Ibanez uh, back there, also made in West Taiwan which is I got for 300 bucks back in 2008. It was pretty good. I got some other Eastwoods that are pretty good. Uh, classic, I don't know. Um, the Dan Electro made in Korea, totally awesome. Uh, this Ibanez Ergodine, 300 bucks made in Korea, totally awesome. I'm going to make a video about that. And uh, the Eastwood, here's one kind of hilarious example, the Eastwood Base 6. And it's like, the workmanship is excellent. It's made in Korea. And uh, the workmanship, excellent. Pickups sound awesome. Uh, really, really good. Except the design. Um, this is a, ca a case of the Eastwood designers being lazy. Because they took a side jack body. Which balances for baritone well. But uh, when you put a 30 inch neck on. Uh, they, they just hocked a massive fucking neck onto the same body, which is already a reverse, you know, Mose Wright style. Uh, it's got balance issues, and that was a bad design choice. But the guitar qual build quality is awesome. Korea. Uh, what's Oh, here's another example. Ken Rose bass. I don't know. This is a mystery to me. I made a video on it, but it's like it's a low-end, high-end bass uh, boutique. I don't know. The neck. It 
It's great. Neck uh, frets, doesn't fart out. 24 fret neck. Awesome pickups, active electronics. It's made of Bubinga. I got this for 200 bucks, but that was back in 2004? Uh, 2008. Yeah, I lived in Germany already, but... Totally sweet. All my Korea stuff, totally sweet. Uh, yeah, the Samber got... Stein, bargain basement, Steinberger spe, Spirit, made in Korea, totally awesome. Spirit, base, made in Korea. X, the neck is great. I mean, and this is all detail work. You'll have to pay a luthier to laugh at you now for you're spending half of the price of the guitar on a fret job. Uh, another unfortunate anecdote is uh, the Rogue Sub-Zero made in Vietnam, which is one of the roughest guitars I've purchased recently as 275 or 80, something like that. But it's got a really rough neck uh, and hilariously shitty sounding pickups, but I'm not gonna change because I love, it's kind of like a mud honey dirt sound. But uh, the neck is totally, not good and i i got a good setup on it just by jacking up the action real high and it's made in vietnam and unfortunately i'm afraid that uh the kufers i mean the uh west taiwanese are uh buying factories or, or uh shifting production to vietnam because i was sitting in the train once with a group of Vietnamese people, and they were telling me, oh yeah, we got big problems with the Chinese buying everything and using us for uh, cheap labor, and I was like, what? Isn't Vietnam way better than China? The PRC? And they were like, yeah, it is, but I mean, uh, we still have cheaper labor, and that was just sad. I didn't realize, uh, I mean, it's an infinitely more sympathetic uh, country than lower Tibet, and yet, I, I I just assumed they would have higher wages, and so no, they don't, I guess. I don't know. So I'm going to accuse the uh, PRC people of this made in Vietnam, Mistran City, which is a distinction of being the most amusingly shittiest guitar I have recently. Which is, oh, by the way, when I get these shitty uh, guitars that end up shitty, I use them for alternate tunings. As part of it, I don't care. Because you can always Sonic Youth right out in, on anything. In fact, Thurston Moore is quoted as having said, I'll play anything but a Steinbrenner. But I, <laughs> on the other hand, um, anything but a Steinbrenner. Anyway, so if the guitar turns out to have a shitty neck, instead of paying 200 bucks for a neck job, it gets Glenn Branca style alternately tuned from me. Now, I also have guitars made from, if you want another nerd rant, yeah, Indonesia, a couple from Japan, I'm lucky enough to have that weren't expensive, and a couple from uh, the United States of, you know, we can talk about that later, but I, I got some ovations, some vintage ovations back in the rumpus room, if you want to talk about actual high quality stuff in the Japanese, but um, although the, 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 the Korean production, I would I would group that in with uh, high quality. And then there's the mystery of Harley Benton. Okay, this is the other important part. There's only very little important material here, but great documentaries gave me the greatest comment to rant and rave about. So now you get the autistic nerd rant, and you should drink Guayusa Machahin, organic energy from tea from Ecuador. It'll jiff you the fuck out. Now, the Harley Bentons, I have five of them now for four. Yeah. They're all, wait, one, two, three, five, five. Yeah, I got five. They're all awesome. Um, or they at least have nice necks and, and doctored frets. You know, four of the five have really good necks. Uh, the acoustic bass and the frets are sharp. Uh, you can look in my back videos, but um, like this is the best 250 I've ever spent on eight string, which I don't really know how to play yet, uh, like I know how to play it all. The mystery of Harley Benton is, it doesn't say where they're made. We know it's not Korea. They say on their website, 
production facilities in PRC, Vietnam, and Indonesia. And I guess you just have to guess. They also don't really have serial numbers on them. I, I don't know how to track these, but um, uh, yeah, they're all good. And the smoothness of the frets and the uh, non-fartiness all the way up the neck is flawless. Yes, pickups. The pickups you can replace. It's not as embarrassing as going to a luthier. Although, I don't know, these pickups kind of non-standard might be a little trickier to replace. But hey, the neck is really, really nice. Uh, now, where's that J something bar baritone? Anyway, Harley Benton. I'm uh, For new guitars, if you're going to... If you gonna get something new and under 300 bucks definitely harley um doesn't say where they're made it's just got an eu import mark hmm anyway this is uh the ja baritone totally awesome really nice uh fretwork neck uh love it this one came with a shitty switch that i had just got fixed love it uh it was like 200 euro bucks. I mean, this is just insane. Love it. Uh, Harley Benton. Now, my theory is, even if they're made in the PRC, which we can't be sure about, because maybe they're made in Indonesia, too, and that's a whole other story, because I got some sweet stuff from Indonesia. Uh, my theory is that Toman... The catalog that uh you know the Harley Benton mark belongs to has enough clout to really ride their asses and make sure that they doctor their frets and don't just say oh it looks good and uh because you know, yeah yeah they can make stuff that looks good and it's got a shitty neck and you're paying 150 bucks to get the good playability that you want. I guess that Harley Benton. There must be doing billions of business with the uh, PRC factories that enslave people. Or maybe they're sending business to Vietnam or Indonesia, preferably. I think they got the pull to force them to be good for really, really low prices. 200, 300. Yeah, you damn well better uh, put that extra step on or we're pulling our order millions and millions. Uh, that's my guess. I mean, I'm, I'm committing the sin of assuming shit now uh, and guessing. But, uh, they're, yeah, uh, they surely have some clout with the communists to force them around for a change. So, mad props, Harley Benton. You uh, managed to uh, get one back on the commies and make him do a good job for a change. Uh, here's another... Uh, this is kind of a unique item. Maybe I'm the only one who has one of these. Uh, Gershenia is a uh, uh, American builder... Gerzenia. I uh, love it when I have to te uh, teach Polish Americans how to pronounce their own names. Gerzenia. Um, made in PRC, but he shifted his whole production to uh, Korea now. He's a designer from Chicago uh, who has a line of really cool looking, um, you know, green things and, you know, an RD. I always wanted some kind of RD type thing so it could be like Chris Nova Novoselic 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 and uh he I got maybe the only baritone that he ever made uh maybe he made more I don't know you should tell me about that but he he just said like listen it's not like a mass produced factory I got a workshop in the PRC of people who know what they're doing and it's the same workshop that makes Balaguer 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 uh, and it's, you know, trained professionals, not just any, any old coolies. And he, he said, yeah, okay. So you just want one with a 28 inch scale length. And I said, yeah, that's what I want. Uh, just baritone 
He's like, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm interested in getting into the sludge market myself, uh, sludge and doom metal. So yeah, maybe uh, I can start a semi-custom baritone line. And he just said, okay, 600 bucks. Uh, and I was like, yeah, great. At that price, I won't complain. He's like, I, I won't have time to t check it out. I'll send it straight to Germany. Uh, and here's the thing. It's good. Okay, fret ends a little bit sharp. Pickups a little bit microphonic. That's fine. It looks great. Fantastic. Uh, but here's an example of communism taking shortcuts. They did not really... The, the specification was 28-inch scale. So what they did is they moved the bridge back. And moved the neck this basically in order to have access to all frets it has to be a little bit more like that they didn't feel like doing the math work they did the math work right to get the scale length right and the frets work so the intonation is fine it's fine but uh i can only access up to the 15th 17th 18th fret it's got a couple more frets i actually use those even even though i can't play anyway so that's an, uh, kind of a mixed thing where it's a good guitar but uh they because it's semi-custom, they neglected to do a little teeny piece of design work. If this was one inch that way, uh, the fret access would have been a whole lot better. Now, but I'm not complaining. It's still totally fine for my purposes. What's another good example? Well, uh, rant and reef a tiny bit more. This is the first... Uh, PRC guitar I ever got back in 2008, Neustadt, Neustadt on the Weinstrasse in Rheinland-Pfalz, Germany, or Rhineland Palatinate. And uh, I really like this. It's one of those examples that um, looks really good. And first expression, uh, on first inspection, it looks really good. And actually, there's not really too much wrong with it. The pickups suck, but those uh, those cheap um, PAF uh, Gibson style pickups, the the cheap ones always suck. So I got to replace with some P90s. Uh, it's and it's like the neck is the neck's good. The fret works good. Actually, this, this is a bad example, but I, like I said, not all not all. PRC guitars have shitty necks. This one, the Ibanez Artcore, is pretty good. I'll do on a video on it later, but um, it's just really plasticky, and it's like, it's almost like, is this some kind of decal or veneer? Because the um, the binding and the it, the back of the neck too, it really looks like they laid on some kind of fake wood grain thing i'm sure they didn't it's just it they succeeded in creating something that's made of wood but seems more like plastic than you could ever imagine so 28 minutes i've gone on long enough um i'm gonna do a part two where we get into philosophy and um more deep dives on these individual guitars if you want if you don't want i, I hate mail please give me negative comments that are better than you suck and you can't play guitar. I know you're ugly. I know. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Telling me you don't understand communism. Samos jemka vole ne razumim nichemo komunismo. Yeah, so give me hate mail and I'll do another nerd rant. This will be great. Uh, other than that, I'll just upload some videos of me playing real shit. But, uh, I mean, hey, it's Shy Squad. So that's what you can do. So 29 minutes, enjoy your next fraction of eternity.